All right, so let's uh, let's move on to something a little more productive than me talking about killing myself. Um, we got an Instagram submitted question from Colorado Snowscape, which is actually a shop in New Jersey called Colorado Snow and Skate. Um, not someone that lives in Colorado and rides a snow skate, which is what I thought it originally was till I looked right. into it. Yeah. But uh, they they asked a question um, if we could dive into all the different can camber profiles used by different manufacturers and who they're best for um that should be about a 10 hour episode i mean it's gonna it, i mean we can do it quick or we can do it long I, we'll just see where it goes from yeah there. we'll just kind of see where but uh going. you know i mean we you got to think that for years it was always camber 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 it's camber and how much camber do you want yes yes mm -hmm. do you want a lot of camber do you want an extra lot of camber or do you want even more than an extra lot of camber yeah that was your options yeah pretty much um and then, you know, we got, in the same year, we got Skate Banana, and we got Rocker, flat to, yeah, flat to rise. We got the Gyrator, so, and we got the Skate Banana. Skate Banana, yeah. And that really kind of set us down the path, and that was when the Skate Banana was like, yeah, it was aggressive. super freaking aggressive. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up getting the Arbor Parabolic Rocker, and Signal then brought Cam out Camera Rock. Yeah, and we got Camrock, and we got all the different variations. I mean, realistically, mm -hmm. there's probably like 30 different kinds of camera profiles. I mean, you, if you look at Camrocker, it's not just twin Camrocker. There's directional Camrocker. There's setback Camrocker. Yeah. You know, there's if you there's break it down into your simplest, starting from camber and moving towards more reverse, and obviously there's going to be slight variations in between all of these, but you basically get camber, Camrock. Uh, I would probably say flat. Yeah, flat. Then you get or flat, flat to rocker, flat, no. and then reverse, uh, hybrid, and then reverse. Hybrid and reverse. Yeah. Uh, just so anyone knows, like if you're listening to the podcast on Podbean, the website, um, Stitcher, whatever other platforms. Hopefully, we're on iTunes. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, I keep signing up, and they keep denying. For some <laughs> fucking been a year into this now. Um. But basically, uh, I have an ex I have a series called Explained. I've broken down different camber profiles. I'll continue to break down different ones. Try to even break down just the ones because a lot of companies just rename it to their proprietary. But it's right. still like, those are your basic ones. Right those are your basic, yeah. Um, you know, the big thing is is like so you have traditional camber from contact point to contact point. There's the rise in there. You load it by weighting it, it drives into it, it rebounds because that's the way it is. It does break in, it does lose its pop. Mm -hmm. Now we've got camber 2.0. Like we had to go to reverse camber and everything so, so that we can come back to make better. camber better. Right. So it's a little less, so you get like, instead of it being a full arc with the center point being the highest, it's more chopped where it's flat and then it comes down. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like that as I like camber 2.0 for sure. Camber yeah. 2.0, it's easier on the knees, it's easier to load, it's mm -hmm. a little more playful, but you mm -hmm. still get that precision and pop. Yep. And that's really good. Um, I think a lot of people, because so many companies went overboard with reverse camber and they're like, there's no pop, there's no this or that. It's a different style of pop, but mm -hmm. it's there. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of companies have finally dialed in. Arbor is probably the best one. I mean, obviously. For anything that's zero camber. And like there's zero positive camber to it, and it's all rocker. Arbor, I think, is pretty much hands down the best. It's the one that doesn't yeah. feel loose. Yep. Like the other thing is, like if you do a full reverse camber, you gotta you gotta dial the side cut. You yeah. need an extra contact point you underfoot because yeah. it steers so underfoot. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, I remember riding a board from Thrive that was full center reverse, and it was a radial side cut. It was like, it was you mean like, like my scallywag. <laughs> Same thing. Scallywag turned better than this thing. I, well, yeah. I, I didn't write it, but... Yeah, yeah I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Scallywag I think, at least had Burton to make the side cut. But, yeah. So, so like, traditional camber is old school riders, someone that wants precision and pop, high-end riders, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Camber 2.0 is the same, but someone that wants it a little bit easier to engage, stuff like that. Cam rocker would be the next one in that you're going to get a little more pressability, playfulness, ease of entry in and out of turns and better float and powder, but you're going to get camber underfoot for snap and pop. After that one, I would go with flat. That's like a broken in camber. And just so everyone knows, no board is truly flat. There's a plus minus about three millimeter variable. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a little reverse and sometimes it's a little camber. 
I've been getting a lot of emails and DMs from you guys freaking out about that out there. Don't freak out. It's a plus minus variable of about three millimeters. So like if yours has a little reverse to it, don't freak out if it has a little bit of camber. Someone sent me one and they're like, look at this. It's got camber and they say it's flat. And I was like, you're fine. You're yeah. you're literally fine. Yeah, it's like not, they can't. They don't have that much control over. Like there's just too many variables because depending on what whether the top of the board or the bottom of the board cools faster, yeah, is going to give it camber or give it rocker. So that's that's all that's causing that, and you can't perfectly control that. Period. No, you just can't. No. So there's so. that. So then I would go with flat. Flat is more like your well broken in traditional camber. You don't really have to load it, but it's still going to have some spring and pop. It's going to be a little looser. It's going to be a little bit easier to engage. Then from there, you would go with your flat to rocker. And depending on how much rocker is going to change everything. Right. Cause like you get ones that are like 40% flat, 60% flat, 80% flat. Mm -hmm. Or if you're really crazy, I mean, there's ones that are like 20% flat, which is almost a fucking full yeah, it's reverse. Basically but reverse. basically you got to look at where that rocker is. Mm -hmm. If it's outside the insert packs, it's going to be a little more stable. If it's inside or underfoot, it's going to be a little more loose. And, and a lot of the same goes for cam rock too, because depending on where you put the rocker yep. points out there, I mean, you have some stuff that barely even has any rocker points to it, and it more or less rides like traditional camera. And then you have some stuff where the rocker points almost directly underfoot, and that's going to steer completely different. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so so you got that, and the thing with flat to rocker is it's easier to press, it's easier to butter, it's easier. It, to um, roll it on edge, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's better in powder. And one of the things that I noticed with anything that's got rocker in the tips, whether it's cam rocker or um, flat to rocker, they're actually faster on a flat because you don't have that drag of the contact point slowing you down. Even reverse yep. camber is like that. Mm -hmm. So then after flat to rocker, then you go to your center reverse camber, and there is such a thing as too much center reverse camber. Definitely. Um, you know, if you can put a board on the ground and spin it like a fucking propeller, yeah, it's probably a little too much. Uh, what that does, though, is it gives it a skate-like pop. You don't have to load the board. You can you just sort of roll back and spring off the tail. Mm -hmm. uh, or you roll forward and spring off the nose. Like that. It's going to be great in powder, It's uh, but it steers underfoot. You lose that drive out at the contact point, so your effective edge is basically shortened down underfoot. Mm -hmm. just, oh, excuse me, just making it a little bit more playful and whatnot it's that's kind of where this thing sits in there i mean basically there and then um i should mention hybrid hybrid is kind of it's hit or miss it's very very hit or miss you've got to re because hybrid really requires you to have your side cut your core profile and your camera profile all working simultaneously together in a smart, smart way. way otherwise it doesn't work so that's your reverse under or reverse between the feet camber underfoot you need to be it needs to be built to the point so that the camber zone locks in and steers directly underfoot mm -hmm. never summer has a problem right now i encountered this on the prototype 2 that i rode because the way it is it the contact point on the vario side cut is on the inside of the foot mm -hmm. it makes it hooky and everyone I, I actually had a guy full-blown lose his shit on me because he's like i hear they're hooky and i explained to him but he, he was looking at multiple versions of boards with that hybrid profile and i tried to explain to him i was like look man what you got to look at he was dead set on the never summer but he was asking me for advice and so i gave him the information he needed to hear not what he wanted I go, what you're going to experience? Because he actually, I think he actually even owned one now that I think about it. He lost his shit telling me that I was talking about something that didn't. But what I was explaining to him was the reason it is hooky is because the Vario side cut isn't underfoot in the inserts. It's on the inside. So it's hooking when you're turning on mm -hmm. there. You're losing that contact underfoot where you actually need it yep. to put it on the inside. So it's like a saucer sled that will suddenly slide out and then go poop and hit hit and you're like oh god oh god and that's what it was and he couldn't um grasp that concept and that's the whole thing is like you know mervin's got it nitro's got it rome has done it you know never summer pat patented and claims that all this bullshit about it's it they're marketing behind their oh my god it's ridiculous it, oh my god i could go in for just i could do a whole podcast on just their bullshit and marketing yeah um Burton has done it. Um, I don't even think they do it anymore. They do. They still do custom flying V. 
Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Custom Flying V. I forgot. Yeah, I think but process, they still do Flying V. Do they v still do well. Custom X Flying V? No, no. I don't think but, so. But basically, what that is, is it's going to give you the play of reverse camber between the feet, but you've got independent zones you have to lock up. Mm -hmm. It steers underfoot, and it's going to be a little more playful in the tips, stuff like that. It's But it gives it a little bit more power than a similar board built without that camber zone under each foot. Because you can still load that camber a little bit. So it gives you... Yeah. You well, still have to snap it more like that skate style, quick snap to it. But it has a little bit more kind of substance to it right on, under depending, foot. And it, a lot of it depends on where the camber peak, peak is. is yeah. And stuff. Because like C2X versus C2E versus C2 mm -hmm. all ride so different. Yep. And the other thing is I think that profile, like the reason we see such popularity in it is because... Any mediocre fucking riders, anyone that cannot fucking snowboard, can ha can ride on it and mm -hmm. suddenly do stuff that they couldn't do, mm -hmm. and it just compensates. It's super easy to turn. It on. compensates for bad habits. Yeah, and stuff. It's super like, easy to turn on, but because you have that positive camber, it allows you to re-engage your contact points a little bit yeah. easier, which gives you just more grip. But you also have all that forgiveness of being full rock. Plus, so. if you're leaning back and putting yeah. all your weight back, that whole front zone is lifted right off the ground, so yeah. it's not dragging. So from you're getting less effective edge, less contact. It's uh, it's one of the reasons why when I was doing product testing with Never Summer that I realized, um, like it, it wasn't a bad profile, but they started to tweak it and they kept going more. They started listening to the people that couldn't fucking snowboard, like the guys that are turning like refrigerators and mm -hmm. shit, going with them because they were like just raving about everything and it was making them a better rider. It wasn't making them a better rider. It was just compensating for the fact that they don't know how to fucking turn. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that dumb fuck from Ohio, kimchi, whatever the fuck his name was, that fucking idiot. That guy didn't know his ass from a hole in the ground, but, uh, it, it was compensating for the fact that the guy couldn't turn or carve. And that's what it is. Um, every profile has its, pros and cons yeah. like you know and you can pick like you give me any category of board and i can find that category of board in any camper profile yeah and a good one for yeah. the most part like you like you know we just talked about how you know rock between the feet camper underfoot just makes snowboarding easier bob you know and kind of basically saying it's for people that don't really give a shit about progressing and whatever however one of my favorite free ride boards is the gold member and it's c2 and then you could say the opposite thing about camber. You know, you said camber is more precise. It's all this. It's all this. It's all this. And there's some really, really good jib decks that are full camber. That are and easy, then, super easy to ride, super forgiving. And that comes down to flex pattern and shape yeah. too. So you and, can't and, pigeonhole any camber profile really into any style of riding, unfortunately. But there, there are definitely areas that they excel in more than others. Where you know, yes. The gold member is RC, and it's one of my favorite free ride boards. But generally speaking, you're not going to find that many free ride boards it's not RC, built it's with C two or C two. Yeah, sorry, um, you're not going to find that many free ride boards built that are rocker between the feet camber underfoot. That's not what that profile excels at. It's definitely doable for that profile, but there's better, there's more common profiles for that. You're going to find most of your free ride boards are camber with early rise nose. Right. That's well, what most it, of them are. One of the things, so we got 600 comments on the board giveaway. Mm -hmm. And like everyone's like, I don't want this because it's reverse camber because, you know, it was the I don't deserve this contest. And people were just shitting on it because it's reverse camber. And I'm like, I don't feel like you guys completely understand like <laughs> how much better their reverse camber is mm -hmm. compared to everyone else's. Like, I have owned, basically, for Westmark Rockers, and when it was the Blacklist, I think, like, as of this year, I think I've owned nine, because they sent me two for some reason, um, which I just gave one away to a friend, because that's what he wanted, but, like, that Arbor reverse camber is not crazy aggressive. No. It's, it's, it's not, like, if you were to put the Arbor formula and the Libtex Skate Banana side by side in a... I would choose the formula or the draft. Draft would probably be the better comparison, I Might think, be, yeah. to the skate banana. Even even the Westmark could be compared theoretically, but I think right. even though it's a better board, um, because the skate banana sucks. But you put those together and you put them side by side. It's like they're going to ride different. One because of the grip tech mm -hmm. 
grip's different than the magnet traction. Like, right. you know, and when you look at that, it's like you can see how they're going to grip and they're going to grip differently and whatnot. Um, it's, you know, there is such a thing as too much reverse. There is such a thing as too much record. There is such a thing as too much camber. Mm -hmm. Like, you can go overboard with anything. Yeah. And, you know, now we're at a point where I think, like, everything is so fucking dialed in with camber profiles. I can ride everything. Like, I rode a lot of powder days on boards that were camber or directional cam rocker. So it had that big, you know, scoopy nose in the mm -hmm. front that was rocker. And when you mm -hmm. weighted it, it would lift up. But you had camber underfoot. And that thing would give you power and drive out of a slash or anything in the turn and that, but I've also ridden a lot of powder boards that are reverse camber or flat to rocker or minimal camber or even just straight camber. Yeah. And it, you know, like there's so much that goes into it. Like before when it was just popsicle stick snowboards and camber kind of just had to hope that the flex pattern was good. Now it's like flex pattern, the shape, the side cut, like where the flex points are, the camber profile. Like you got how do the so flex points match up to the to the camber profile. How do the flex points match up to the side cut? Right. Where you know where is your insert pack on top of all of that? How do the contact points feel? Because even changing the shape of the contact point can change how a board feels. Like, oh yeah, so much goes into how much. I mean, if you're riding, if you're riding just a cambered board with a radial side cut, it's going to ride so much different than a cambered board with a tri-radial side cut. Like yeah. It's going to have more grip or a dual degressive or a progressive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it, they all ride so different compared to each other that it really genuinely changes everything that's happened. So, mm -hmm. you know, you got to kind of pay attention to all that. Like you can't pigeonhole a board just based on its camera profile. Like, so classic example, like I've got to replace a bunch of boards in that I my personal stuff. So I'm looking at the the simulator from Capita to be my new park board, which is camber into a little flat into a rocker, and uh, in there doesn't really ride like a cambered board in my opinion. It's like such a mellow and easy flexing board. It almost rides like a flat to rocker, but you get more spring out of it. Then uh, I was looking at the Nitro Dropout to be like kind of my powder all mountain board to replace my Brewster and that board is camber. It's camber, but it's got power pods on it and it, it rides different than that. And then like, you know, I've got my lumberjack, which is flat to rocker mm -hmm. and every one of them, they have their place in my line, you know, like what I'm going to do and how I'm going to ride it, mm -hmm. and what's going to be where and whatnot. So, you know, unfortunately, you can't just pigeonhole and be like, like I. Classic example is my my boss at the liquor store, George. He he got his first snowboard in nineteen eighty four or eighty five, something like that. I think it was eighty four, mm -hmm. and uh, he was like one seventy cambered wide snowboards. Even though he's got a size nine boot, you know, he just loved that. I've got him riding a K two Simple Pleasure. It was one fifty six. Yeah. 156. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that, you know, his daily driver is a slash that is cam rocker now. And he's like, oh, I like that profile. Then he was like, oh, I like this profile. And I put him on my cool bean and he was like, which is flat to rocker. And he's just like, this thing is so different. And it's a 144, but it's volume shifted. And you, there's so much technology that goes into it. Like yeah. camber profiles, like by and large, pretty much. I don't even, like when I'm reviewing shit, I just like to be surprised these days. I'm just like, ah, I'll just throw some bindings on it. I, I look at what they recommend the board for. Oh, it's a park board. Oh, it's a free run. It's an all mount board. Yeah, all the camera profile really tells me is how I'm going to load the board to turn it. Yeah, That's and it. even if you give me a blind board, like within a lap or two, I'll figure out that camber profile and mm -hmm. be like, oh, this is how this loads, and this is how this engages. And I mean, I rode 19 Mervin boards. So, I mean, that was C3. C2E, C2X, C2, and Banana. So that's, you know, and each one of them rides different. You know what I miss that I was just thinking about? I don't know if anybody makes it anymore, is True S Rocker. Rome still does. Do they? Yeah. Rocker between the feet, camber under the back foot. And yeah. so reverse between the feet, camber under here, and then the reverse starts between the feet, and it goes all the way through the nose. Yeah. They do? 
Yeah, go for it. Powder vision. I think the uh, rocker points uh, in front of the power foot. They might have changed it, but I think yeah. it's still there. Doesn't Burton still have something like that in the family tree line? Oh. All of their, uh, they went through the balance free ride, which pushed that rocker point out in front of the front foot. Okay. And there, then, it's and still, then Mervin doesn't do C1 um, anymore. So I don't know if anybody does that one anymore. Isn't there something from Yes? Like the Y? Isn't that kind of similar? I well, think, no, because I think, I think it, the, that rocker transition is still outside the front foot. But I think, I think there's a flat does. section before. Maybe. Like, and it I might be, and, and that might be the closest, but like I'm thinking like Barracuda, La Nina, like those boards. No, I think there's still but, some of that out there. I'd have to look. Yeah. Um, I can't think see, of anything, but. but there's definitely... Because I actually missed that profile. I like that. No, profile. that was... That's a fun profile, too, yeah. for powder. Because for powder. you get all that... That's oh, you know who does? You, do. you know who does make it? Snowfisk. Okay. They yeah. Do. Snowfisk oh, okay. still does. So, because um, it's camber, and then it's like a very micro... Almost flat, yeah, and then it's there. But yeah, okay. that that's because it's all back foot camber. It's yeah. all back foot camber. Yeah. Them. So, so that's that's still out there. Um, by and large, though, I mean, we are in the golden age of snowboard technology. There is literally a profile, a shape, a side cut, a width, a flex pattern, and a graphic for anyone out there. Yeah, if anything, for real. If anything, there's too much on the market. Yeah, that's why I have too many snowboards. No, you're a hoarder. There's a difference. I mean, See, unlike I you, prefer the term collector. Hoarder. Do you have them hanging up to show? No, they're all in my car. Exactly. In a, in a big stack. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. You can't even put anyone in your front seat because there's lamps in it. No, those are in the back now. Now the front seat's just full of bike stuff. God, it just keeps getting pushed further and further back. See, if I do buy you a car, because <laughs> I'm probably going to buy you a car because your car is going to blow up, probably, and I'm going to buy you the exact same thing I have, we're going to have some stipulations on how you need to take care of the leather in that, because that is high-end <laughs> leather. Yeah. I don't need those getting destroyed. But, yes, yes, uh, just side note, um, I am thinking of possibly buying the exact same car that I have because I found another one and I know I can lowball them for even less than I paid for the one I have to get Kevin a car and I'm going to get it a custom plate that says Angry 2. There is no Angry 1, but his would have Angry 2 on the license plate. Yeah. Full vanity. Just so everyone knows that's Kevin's car, so wherever he goes, be like, Kevin's here! So he gets to get deal, deal with that. Meanwhile, mine's like parked on the other side of the lot, just yeah. normal plate, be like, <laughs> Too freaking funny. So. Anyways, if you have any further questions about camber profiles, like we said at the very beginning of this little segment, we could probably talk about this for like 10 hours. We could. So leave us some comments, ask some questions. We'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. Also, Colorado Snow Skate. You need to put like the little and symbol in there. Snow mm -hmm. and skate. Mm -hmm. So you're not just a Colorado Snow Skate. Because mm -hmm. this is Angry Snowboarder, not Angry Snow Skater. Mm-hmm. People always ask me to talk about snow skates. I fucking don't care about them. No, nope, don't care. I literally don't. Those things are death, deathly. Like, yes. I don't so fuck with them. I scary, don't care. Scary. I just don't care for them. Yeah. You have fun on them, good for you, but... Eh. I just don't care. I don't care. 